Hello, everyone. I am your host, Nicole Barrios. I'm a student at Penn State Lehigh Valley studying criminology. Today, I am bringing in a special guest who has an impressive career history in law enforcement. Fellow students know her as the criminal justice professor, but are not aware of her past careers. She has worked for the FBI in the Joint Terrorism Task Force, Secret Service details protecting presidential cabinet secretaries and member of Congress, and an Office of Inspector General Special Agent. I would love to welcome Professor Deborah Dreschbach. All right, let's get to the questions. All right. <laughs> so can you share a bit of your background and how it led you to a career in law enforcement? I would be happy to. I went to college at Westchester University and majored in criminal justice. And when I started, I had thought I wanted to be an attorney, specifically a prosecutor. By the time I got through college, I was tired and broke. Uh, I'd taken an investigations class and the bells rang and the birds sang and I knew that that's what I wanted to do. What were some of the most memorable or impactful cases you worked on during your time with the FBI, Secret Service, or Office of Inspector General? Ooh, that's a great question. I just got that, I just got asked that the other day. One of the more meaningful cases was the first federal case that I ever worked when I was very young. I was 23, 24, and it, it's kind of funny. It involved cows. Used to be There used to be a program called the Dairy Reduction Program where the federal government actually paid farmers not to milk their cows. So they would have to, because it would stabilize the price of milk. And so this farmer, they had to get rid of their cows and this farmer actually hid his cows. He didn't sell them, he hid them on another farm, but he submitted documents to the federal government showing that he sold his cow, right? Which were false statements. And there was an attorney that was involved in the transaction drafting up these phony documents. So it was really a great case because A, I got the farmer and B, I got an attorney disbarred. And so that was my, you know, and everybody made fun of me for that first case. The other favorite case that I had was a national security case where an individual from overseas was buying rocket launchers from us. And, and all kinds of prohibited weapons. And so we were able to travel the world with him because we were supposed to be money people and, and had means to do this type of thing. So like we would buy, we would put ourselves up in penthouses in Las Vegas and be high rollers. And so that was kind of fun. Wow, that's awesome. So correct me if I'm wrong, but given your experiences, have you worked undercover? And if so, can you share your experiences and challenges? I did. I did work undercover. And when I was in my early to late 20s. Inter one interesting, well, there were a couple cases that involved at that time when I was in my early 20s, food stamps were paper, like paper money. Like now they're on the, they're electronic, they're on the cart. And so people would buy and sell drugs with food stamps, thinking that they wouldn't get caught or it was a lesser crime, but it wasn't. And we, Baltimore Police Department called me and they said, we have a police officer that is buying and selling drugs and using food stamps. And so they brought me in and I was the case agent, but I was also the undercover agent. And so I sold, uh, we, we did food stamps and drugs with this undercover, with this police officer while he was in uniform, while he was driving his marked vehicle. And so we arrested him and it was weird because Baltimore had this thing where if the police department talked to him after the arrest and they got him to confess that he would be able to keep his pension. If an outside agency talked to him after the arrest and he confessed, he would lose his pension. So here I am, this young kid, going in to talk to this police officer with another agent, not with the Baltimore Police Department because they wanted to take his pension away. And we had really good video and audio and I was able to get him to confess and he lost his pension and he worked there 25 years. And he did jail time. He had just completely ruined his life. So did you ever encounter ethical dilemmas in your work? Sometimes minor, um, sometimes, you know, not so minor. For example, I worked with, you know, you always get a sense of, you know, I'm, I'm a by the rules type of person um, and you work with individuals that are not and you can kind of pick that up pretty quickly. One big thing, I was on a, on a dignitary protection assignment in Italy and I worked with a guy that was just so abusive and would curse and yell at me and 
didn't matter what I said or what I did. It, it was just horrible. He was just so abusive. And so I got home and I talked to my special agent in charge and he said, you need to write that up. And so I did. That happened very infrequently, but you do have to stand up for, for what's right. Are there specific qualities or skills you believe are essential for success in this field? Oh my God, you're the best. <laughs> yes, absolutely. First and foremost, writing ability and ability to talk to people. You will do both every single day. That's why I'm so crazy in my classes about doing both. It's the essence of your job. Being timely with your documentation, right? That the FBI and other agencies, you have time limits. If you go and interview somebody, you have to have that report written and submitted digitally within three days. And you can't be late on those things because you're graded on that, right? Your your performance evaluation. So, you know, meeting deadlines, all the things that you all do in college are transferable to the workforce. Being able to talk to somebody, be sympathetic, be relate to them, you know, look them in the eye, shake, you know, all the things we're, I teach an introduction to internship class, all those, those soft skills that your generation isn't so great at working on those. Um, because you're going to have to talk to people every single day. Nine times out of ten, you're asking for something. You're asking for, you know, information. You're asking for a confession. You're asking for bank documents or, or evidence or whatever. So um, both speaking and, and writing ability is so important. Great answer. So what advice would you give to someone aspiring to pursue a career in federal law enforcement? Go in with your best foot forward. I always tell students too, you have to have something additional on your resume. It's great if you're a 4.0 major, but if you don't, if you're not well-rounded, you're not out there volunteering, you're not in clubs, you're not, you know, doing something extra. Finding those things that really make you unique, make you stand out. That was my final question. Oh, those questions were fabulous. Thank you. I appreciate it. To end this podcast, I would love to thank Professor Dreschbach for taking the time out of her day for this interview and to all of you for listening.